Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create realistic almonds in Blender. If you're interested, then stick around until the end of the video. So let's get started. First hit Shift A, add an icosphere and press Ctrl 3. In the modifier, set the render to 3 and add a displace modifier and move it up here. Click on new and click here and set the type to clouds. Go back to the modifiers and set the strength to 0.37. Set the coordinates to global. Now if we move the object, the displacement will move along with it. Let's shade smooth and go into edit mode. Select the top vertice here and enable proportional editing. Press G and Z and move it up like this. Now select the one on the Y axis here and here. Let's go into side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and press S. And scroll the mouse wheel like this. Select these two vertices on the X axis and these two as well. Now press S and X. Let's press A and S, Y. Now let's press S and X. Select the top vertice again and press S and X again. And scroll your mouse wheel like this. I think I'm going to move it down slightly like this. Now I select the one on the bottom and move it down. Select these vertices here and this one as well. Disable proportional editing and press S and Y. Let's also select these vertices and the ones on the other side, like this, and press S and Y. Go back into object mode, hit Shift A and add a UV sphere and scale it up like this. Press 1 to go into front view and Z to go to wireframe and go into edit mode. Select these vertices here and delete them. Go back to fiber shading and let's add a loop cut down here. Press E, Z and S, add a subdivision surface modifier and set the levels viewport and render to 3. Now add a solidify modifier and move it above the subdivision surface modifier. Set the thickness to minus 0 0.02. Let's add another loop cut here and move it down like this and do the same up here and move it up. Go back into object mode and shade smooth. Now let's go into side view again, hit shift A and add a plane, move it down and let's press S100. Let's save now, select the almond and go to the physics properties, select rigid body, select the bowl and select rigid body again and set it to passive and the shape to mesh. Select the almond again and go to shading. Go to rendered view. I'm going to use cyclist for this. In the world properties, set the color to sky texture. Set the sun elevation to 37.5 and the sun rotation to 45. Set error to 6 and dust in the zone to 3. Let's also set the strength to 0.5. Click on new. Add a mass grave texture. Plug the height into the base color. Set the scale to 10 and the detail to 15. Add a mix RGB. And let's duplicate it, plug the color into color 1. And here let's take the height and plug it into the factor and make sure it's also plugged into color 2. Now shift, right click and drag over here, add a color ramp, put it here and bring the white into somewhere around here. For this mix RGB, let's set the factor to 0.15, add another color ramp put that here. For the black I'm going to use this hex code here. You can copy it if you want to. For the white I'm going to use this hex code. We also need to set the subsurface here to 0 0.03. Add a math node, put it here and plug the value into the roughness. Duplicate the mix RGB, take this color here and plug it into color 2 and plug this color into the value here. Let's set this value to 1.55. Now take these two nodes and put them over here. Take the color here and plug it into color 2. Duplicate the Musgrave texture and plug the height into color 1 here. With the Musgrave texture selected, press Ctrl T. Set the scale on the X to 4.13 and on the Y to minus 0.15. By the way, if you want to have these previews here, you can get the node preview add-on through the link in the description. Now let's set the scale here to 15. Duplicate this mix RGB and plug it into the normal. Add a bump node. Let's duplicate it. For this one, check invert and plug it into color 1 and this one into color 2. Set the strength here to 0.1 and set this factor to 0.9. Select this color and plug it into the height. Duplicate this mix RGB three times. 
and plug this color into the strength. Let's plug this color into color one and this one into color two and into the factor. Let's grab these and move them down. Add a wave texture, put it here and plug the color into the factor here. And let's also plug it into the factor here and into color two here and here. Now shift and right click drag over here. Set the scale to 25 and the distortion to 10.7. Add a color ramp, put it here and bring the white into somewhere around here. Add a mask wave texture, put it here and plug the color into color one here. Duplicate it and plug the height into color one here. For this one, let's set the scale to 10 and for this one to 100 and set the detail to 15 for both of them. Select the mapping node and press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it and keep the connection. Set the set to minus 0.27. Now plug the vector into the vector here and here. Again, select the mapping node and press Ctrl Shift D. Take the vector and plug it into color one here. Let's also plug it into the height of the inverted bump node. Now shift, right click and drag and put this over here, add a color ramp, put it here and bring the black into somewhere around here. Now add a noise texture, put it here and set the scale to 500. Let's also set the detail to 15. Let's save again and select the bowl, click on new again. If you can't see the notes, then just press A and delete on the numpad. Set the roughness to 0.2 and the clear code to 0.63. Add a hue saturation value, put it here, connect the color to the base color and set the saturation to zero. Add a noise texture, put it here and plug the factor into the color. Set the scale to 10,000. With the noise texture selected, press Ctrl T. Select the plane and click on new again. For this, I'm going to use a free texture. You can find a link to that in the description. Select the principal BSDF and press Ctrl Shift T. Go to the folder where you have the texture and press A and enter. Let's save again and go back to layout mode. I'm going to position my view around here and hit Shift A, add a camera. Control Alt Zero to go into camera view. Select the arm end and move it up like this so that it's not visible in the view of the camera. Let's save again and go into front view. Now let's press Shift D and duplicate it a couple of times. Go into side view, select all of them and duplicate them again. Now it should look something like this. You can of course duplicate them more or less often. Let's save again and go to the scene properties. Go to Rigid Body World and go to Cache and click on Bake. Once it's done baking, go back into camera view and go to frame 250. So I repositioned my camera. These are the values if you want to use them. Now hit Shift A, add an empty plane axis, enable the snapping and set it to face project. Now press G. I'm going to put the empty here. Select the camera and go to the object data properties. Enable depth of field and select the empty. I'll set the abstract to 0.1 and the blades to 16. In the render properties, go to color management and set the view transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. Go to compositing, enable use nodes, add a denoise node set to accurate and enable denoising data. If you don't enable this, then you won't get these outputs here. Now go to the output properties, select a resolution that you want and let's select an output folder. I created a new folder for this. I'm going to call the images rendered images and put an underscore after the name so that Blender will automatically assign numbers to the frames. Click on accept. I'm going to use JPEG and set the quality to high quality. If you want the render to be faster, then you can go up here and enable lock interface. You can also go here and type in persistent data. Just be careful with that because it can use a lot of memory. I'm going to enable it. Now let's save again and press Ctrl F12 to render the animation. Once it's done rendering, close this window and go to video editing. Make sure you are on frame 1. Hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Set the file format to FFmpeg video, the encoding container to MPEG4 and the output quality to high quality. Go to the render properties. Go to color management and set the view transform to standard and the look to none. Now here hit shift A and click on image sequence. Find the folder where you have the images. In my case it's right here. You can also paste in the location here and delete the name. 
and hit enter, press A and enter, save again and press Ctrl F12 to render the animation. If you liked this tutorial then you're probably also going to like the one that is on screen now. I'll see you next time.